Today we're um, reporting the results of a study where we've prospectively recruited mothers with babies diagnosed as tongue-tie that have uh, booked in for phrenotomy with a surgeon and we've also got a prospective control group. So what we plan to do was do a lot of measures on these babies because the evidence has shown that whilst it reduces pain during breastfeeding, there really isn't any improvement in long-term breastfeeding rates and these women don't feed for longer. So we wanted to explore that and understand why. So we bring um, the mothers in before and after phrenotomy and the control group and we do our suck, swallow, breathe study. And so we measure the pressures in the baby's mouth, we look at the ultrasound to see how the baby's sucking, but more importantly, we measure the mother's milk production and we measure the transfer um, of milk from the breast by the baby. And I was really quite uh, stunned at the results because what we found was that these mothers of the babies that were having phrenotomy, two thirds of them weren't producing enough milk for their baby, what we would consider low supply. And that hadn't been rectified prior to phrenotomy. Now one might hypothesise that the baby will extract um, more milk after a phrenotomy and that wasn't the case either. So whilst the mothers experienced a reduction in pain during breastfeeding, milk production and milk transfer, neither of those improved. So we weren't getting effective breastfeeding after phrenotomy and that's kind of a real concern for us because that's reflected in our follow-up results where we see um, cases of oral aversion after the surgery and we've also seen uh, many of the infants that weaned were the ones that were breastfeeding prior, so with early weaning. For a long time in our research we've been measuring mother's milk production using test weights and we've also been measuring milk transfer from, by the baby from the breast. So we're able to see how much milk the babies, uh, the, sorry, the mother's producing and also how much the baby is taking. So this very simple procedure is able to tell you two things. A, is the mother making enough milk? B, is the uh, baby able to extract it? And that's important to continue milk synthesis and milk production. So what we're doing currently is creating a reference range so that we can use this in clinical practice. So we're looking at 120 babies, boys and girls evenly split, and basically generating curves that you can plot against to see if the mother's milk production is within the normal range. So because there are no objective tests for this clinically, as you know, um, we are very keen to translate that into practice. So we've also got another study where we looked at mothers who had perceived low milk supply. Now these mothers are at risk for early weaning is one of the major reasons women give up breastfeeding. And what we're finding is those women that come into a breastfeeding centre and say they think they've got low milk supply, again around a half to two thirds of those mothers are correct when we measure it. And we believe these measures will help mothers and clinicians determine what kind of management needs to be implemented, particularly in the early days, in the first few weeks when milk production is established, because we know that predicts how, how much volume is made, for example, at six weeks. So it's really important to get a good start. So if we can catch these mothers early, do some simple measures over 24 hours and instigate a plan, I think we can be more successful in really assisting these mothers to go on to have a, a good breastfeeding experience.